We want to dig a little deeper on the question of when the Fed will back off of buying bonds, what it means for the market. Stephen Rusciuto is with us. He's chief U.S. economist with Mizuho Securities. He thinks the Fed continues to ease for quite some time. But Robert McTeer is the former Dallas, uh, Dallas Federal Reserve president and a CBC contributor. He says the Fed will stop easing sooner rather than later. Gentlemen, good to have you on the Welcome. program. Thanks so much for joining us. And Bob Thank McTeer, you. let me kick this off with you. When you say that the, uh, the Fed will stop sooner rather than later, uh, what, what are you envisioning? I don't, I don't really mean stop. I think maybe they will decide that 80, 85 billion a month is uh, more than they need and they will phase that down uh, somewhat. I, I think though that it goes on through, through 2013. One thing that Mr. Bernanke believes that is relevant here is that he thinks the stance of monetary policy has to do with the level of Fed assets rather than the growth of Fed assets. So if he starts tapering off and, uh, and just sort of glides in, he doesn't consider that a tightening. He would consider that locking in the ease that's already prevailing. All right. Let, let me just interrupt for very quickly. Mr. Cashin just came by. There was a rumor going around that maybe the IMF may step in on Cyprus with a bailout plan of their own, but that's been obviously discounted all of a sudden here. So, a lot of But again, that's just speculation. This, yeah. We're not hearing anything like that, but that was what was making the rounds and pushing the market higher all of a sudden there. Stephen Rusciuto, why, you know, if the economy is going to continue to improve and there, you know, all the metrics seem to point in that direction, things are getting better, why wouldn't the Fed pull back at least some of the, the liquidity they've been putting in this market, as Bob McTeer suggests? Well, the reality is the economy is growing. We all know that. But look back at some of the data. If you average the January and February data, you discover that they are lower than the fourth quarter average was for all the monthly economic statistics. And I think that's important. In the fourth quarter of the year, the economy barely grew. And now we've got an economy that's probably going to have a little bit of a snapback. But the underlying support statistics just aren't improving on a year-over-year -year basis or on a quarter-over-quarter -quarter basis. And I think the Fed has to look at that and ask themselves the question, can they allow interest rates at the long end of the curve to start to back up against the backdrop of this economy? And I think the answer is no. They have to fight against that interest rate movement. And I think any pairing back of the rate at which they are acquiring assets will be detrimental to that view on the level of interest rates. Well, in terms of, you know, the impact of Cyprus, do you think that this should change what we're expecting, whether it be out of the Federal Reserve or out of corporate earnings? Is Cyprus a game changer here? Now, Cyprus no. isn't a game changer on the Federal Reserve, nor is it on the level of assets. I think what you have to consider with regard to Cyprus is it just continues to show you that global flows of financial money or global flows of financial assets are going to favor the United States. I mean, people could argue that we're mismanaged, but when you look at the group of people that sat down to make the decision to go ahead and tax bank deposits in right. Cyprus and not understand the ramifications of it, you ask yourself a question, why should I have money in Europe? And I think you are going to see a continued exit of money out of Europe into the United States. And that's why I think the risk trade in the United States is off. Stocks and bonds can both do better uh, over the balance of 2013 at the same okay. time. Bob McTeer, same question to you, but, uh, you know, as things improve economically here in the United States, yes, they would want to pull back, you would think. But when you still have the uh, debt crisis in Europe looming there, that's an argument to add more liquidity to this market. So, you know, they're sort of stuck between the rock and the hard place, as the Fed usually is, right? Well, on, on interest rates, uh, if Europe continues to uh, be a little bit crazy, the longer term rates in the U.S. will tend to be pushed down because of safe haven considerations. I think when the Fed starts to, uh, the Fed might lose control of long rates a little bit at some point, but I think short rates will, uh, will stay very low. And so we might get a little steepening of the yield curve down the road, but I think it'd be closer to the end of the year. All right, gentlemen, we must go get a little breaking news here, see what's going on. Thank you both for joining us.